Y'all had a good trip? Had a great trip. It was great to see Rebecca. So it was good to be back too. Yeah. Well, good morning. Uh, as a way of announcement, um, uh, Mary has given us our statement showing uh, everything's been paid. And she has a note here that our insurance has been paid for for the year. So that's, uh, that's it for the financial. Um, but last week marked 52 weeks that we have actually been filming and doing everything online. So it's been a whole year since this COVID thing has really turned the world upside down. And I am looking forward to having people back in the church. So we're asking and we're asking the people online, what will it take to get you back in church? Uh, have two services, three services, put plastic up, uh, have outside services. What will it take? Because we want to see the pews filled up again. We'll see the the church body back together. So let us know and um, and uh, we'll work on, on making it happen. So, but let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that you've given us, for this time that we can be in your house, that we can fellowship. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the sun that's shining. And Father, uh, we just ask that your blessings be upon us today as, as we come together, as we listen to your word, as we share, and that you just open our hearts, prepare prepare our hearts for today's message, and just lift this before you, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, like Daniel said, we just miss everybody so much, you know. We'll be willing to do whatever. Like we said, put plastic up. Of course, we'll wear our mask, you know. Not use the facilities if that's what takes, you know. <laughs> we just want to see people back together again. It's so hard, you know, not having us come together. And I miss my kids so bad. I, I just really miss them, and I want I want to think of some way we can reach back out to them and have them come back, because it's hard. But let's turn over to page 363, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. 363. <laughs> All right. At this time, do we have any praise or prayer requests to share? Seems like this virus is getting better, so we gotta keep praying for that. Yeah, keep praying. Yeah, that things will get back more normal. Uh, continue praying for all those that are affected by the flood, because um, I know there's a lot here in Owsley County and then Lee County and all over the place. So I was helping out with the with uh, the camp this past week, uh, someone not, not too far from here, they had four feet of water in their house. So we were replacing the floor and, and working on putting up a new ceiling and just kind of help clean up a little bit. So it's, it's a lot of people out there have been affected. Any other praise or prayer requests? Okay. All right, if there's nothing else, let's go ahead and go before the Lord in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, okay, please turn with me to Proverbs chapter 1, Proverbs chapter 1, and we'll be going through the first seven verses of Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, starting with verse 1, and it reads as follows. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, 
justice and judgment and equity, to give subtly to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and destruction. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you, as we take a look at this passage, I pray that you speak to our hearts and that you share with us the truths that you want us to receive today. And help us to apply them in our lives for your honor and your glory as we look at the, the wisdom that Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, has imparted upon us. Help us to use this for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now notice the diagramming of the verses here. I uh, hope you can see that. But you can see how much the verses are intertwined and are all together. Verse 2 relates to verse 5 and to verse 7, talking about uh, wisdom and instruction. Verse 4 relates to verse 7, and the theme of the verse can be summed up in verses 5 through 7. They are all connected in some form or fashion. Now, many people have often challenged or taken a challenge to read one Proverbs a day for an entire month. And since there's 31 Proverbs, the average month, 30, 31 days, you can actually read through the Proverbs in basically a month there. Proverbs is a book that is packed full of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and truth. In its 31 chapters, Proverbs discusses many practical matters to help believers live in harmony with God, as well as their neighbors. Uh, subjects that covered in this wise and realistic book included how to choose the right kind of friends, the perils of adultery, the value of hard work, dealing justly with others in business, the dangers of strong drink, treating the poor with compassion, the values of strong family ties, the folly of pride and anger, and the characteristics of genuine friendship. Scholars both agree that Proverbs is a comp compilation of material from several different sources. This gives the book a unique internal structure. But the book itself tells which parts were written by one author and which came from another hand. And here, this part here, we see it's from the son of David, King Solomon of Israel. The name of Solomon is, as author, is associated with the book of Proverbs from the very beginning. Verse 1, chapter 1 states, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David. And we also know that Solomon was noted for, uh, throughout the ancient world, for his superior wisdom. And we see that in 1 Kings chapter 4. Additional evidence of his authorship is found within the book of Proverbs itself, where Solomon is identified as the author uh, from verse, uh, chapter 10, verse 1 through 22, verse 16, as well as the writer of chapters 25 through 29. Solomon received, received his wisdom from as a gift from God. When David and Bathsheba's son Solomon became king, God appeared to him in a dream and said he could ask God for anything. And so we see in 1 Kings 3 that Solomon had asked for wisdom. If you would, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 3. And here we see a conversation between um, God and Solomon. This event occurs in the form of a dream. In verse 3 we see Solomon loved the Lord and walked in the statutes or the ordinances or the law of his father David, except he still sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. You see, even with all that wisdom, one must still apply and use that understanding in the way that pleases the Lord. But as we skip down to verse 5, we see where God appeared before Solomon. Now, if you have your Bibles open to 1 Kings chapter 3, read with me, starting with verse 5. 1 Kings 3, 5 says, In Gibeon the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said, 
Thou hast shown unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. Thou hast kept him, kept for him this great kindness. Thou hast given him a son to sit on the throne as it is this day. And now, O Lord, my God, thou hast, kept, thou hast made my, thy servant king instead of David, my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. So here we see Solomon as king, and he recognizes his lack of understanding in um, properly leading the nation. So we see in verse 9 where he asks God for an understanding heart, for the ability to discern, to discern between good and bad, that he might be able to judge people in a worthy manner. Uh, we pick up reading in verse 10 where it says, verse 10 where it says and the speech pleased the lord that solomon had asked this thing and god said unto him because thou hast asked this thing and hast not asked for thyself long life neither asked for rich hast thou asked for riches for thyself nor hast asked the life of thine enemies but hast asked for thy self understanding to discern judgment behold i have done according to thy word Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou, thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall be, not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. So King Solomon, he receives wisdom from God and his understanding. Uh, with this wisdom, he shares some pieces of truth, understanding, and knowledge in the book of Proverbs. And in just the first seven verses here, we see five things to do. To know, to perceive, to receive, to give, and to understand. That is, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment and equity, to give subtly to the simple, and to understand the Proverbs and the interpretation. Wisdom and instruction are something that can be known, as we see from this, and it can, it can be received. And yet fools despise wisdom and its destruction. King Solomon wrote so that the wisdom and instruction may be known and not despised. Notice what verse 5 says about a wise person in our passage today. It says, A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. One who is wise will both hear, that is, will listen with the intent to understand, and will increase in learning, and one who has understanding will seek wise counsel, not, not the foolish counsel. Anyone can seek counsel from whomever, but to seek the wise counsel shows one has understanding and is seeking for the right answers and guidance, not the foolish information. So what is the purpose of Proverbs? We see here, first of all, encouraging God's people to acquire a disciplined skill in right living, as explained in verses 3 through 5. Secondly, we see to encourage God's people to develop keen intellectual insight, which is explained in verse 6. Verses 2 through 7 expresses the, to the reader to know wisdom and instruction, that is, to comprehend and to understand wisdom, to perceive the words of understanding. To perceive is referring to our intellectual development, which is developing the right thinking. Verse 3, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. Verse 4, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Verse 5, a wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Verse 6, to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and the riddles. Verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge but fools despise wisdom and instruction. 
Therefore, the beginning of knowledge starts with a great reverence and a deep respect of God, with God and his laws. And therefore, we see here in verses 1 through 7 are intended to impart uh, these five things down here that you see on the screen. Wisdom, discernment, prudence, judgment, and knowledge. We live in a world full of knowledge today. We are connected in social media, cell phones, internet, and so forth. We can Google and search anything and everything. Knowledge is at our fingertips, literally. We all want to know things. In many instances, we desire to be the first to know something, to have some news so that we can share it with others. We desire knowledge, but we need good knowledge. Good knowledge and wisdom in life. We can learn it from school, from parents, guardians, teachers, pastors, Sunday school teachers, and so forth. However, there is also an improper knowledge and wisdom, knowing how to do wrong and harmful things, and we must keep from using this type of wisdom. Consider verses 15 through 19 of Proverbs chapter 1. My son, it says, walk thou, walk thou, not thou in thy way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait from their own blood. They lurk privately for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Verse 19, the knowledge is of a wrongful living, and it takes away the life of its owners. Remember 1 Kings 3.14, where God told Solomon that if he would walk in God's ways and keep his statutes, keep his commandments, as Solomon's father David did, then God would lengthen Solomon's days. And so in principle, we can find our days are shortened by using the wrong knowledge in life, or more days through using godly wisdom in our life. Ephesians chapter 1 talks about the obedience of children. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou may live as long on the earth. Good knowledge, good wisdom, good application here. The Bible shows in many places When those who do right, they, they live wisely and they follow God, godly knowledge, that they will prosper and even have long life. We can know wisdom. We have already seen that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And to fear Him is to respect Him. He gives knowledge. As we read, as we read, study, and apply the Bible, um, the truth in the Bible in our lives, Solomon received no, uh, wisdom. He received knowledge. He received understanding because he asked God for it. And there is a lesson to be learned here. We too can have godly wisdom. But we must ask God for it. Seek after it wholeheartedly. But we are also given the responsibility to use and apply it. To apply that wisdom, that knowledge and understanding that we have in God. In a godly um, honoring fashion. How exciting, though, to receive wisdom from God, allowing us to know Him more intimately and having a deeper bond, a stronger relationship, a precious fellowship with our Creator, with our Heavenly Father. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you, as we've taken a look in this passage in Proverbs, the importance of good, godly wisdom, and knowledge, and instruction, and understanding that, Father, as we seek after you, that we must seek for your wisdom and that we must apply it in an understanding way in our lives. Help us to do so, Father, and help us, we ask, not so much for the, the long days, but for good days filled with your righteousness, with your goodness, with your knowledge and your understanding. Father, we just ask that you teach us and guide us and help us to apply these in our lives for your glory and your honor. Father, I lift our heavenly family before you for those who are here, for those who are not. And I ask your blessings on each one. I ask that uh, you protect them and care for them throughout this day and the rest of this week.
I also pray that, that we may again soon see our house, your house filled with your people. We just lift us before you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue to stay safe. Say, uh, enjoy the, the heat and the warmth of the, the spring. And uh, remember, God loves you. Julie and I love you. And have a great week. The Bible teaches that the church is like a vine with its many branches. It's like living stones built together, members of the body of Christ all knit together. The Christian fellowship is not optional, it's essential. It's commanded. We are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. We have the great church, the body of Christ, but it has its local branches all over. And one may be called Lutheran, one may be Baptist, one may be Presbyterian. Whatever the name may be, if it's a place where Christ is preached, if it's a place where Christ is exalted, we are to go there and give it everything we have in the work of the church. The church is to worship together. It's a place where we give our tithes and offerings to the work of the Lord. I hope you will go to church tomorrow. This is Saturday night. Let's all of us be in the Lord's place of worship tomorrow. All across America, let's go to church. God has commanded it. And I want to tell you, you cannot live a victorious Christian life and have the peace and the joy in your heart without faithfulness in the church. Stand with your church. I want to ask you tonight, are you a Christian? Are you living that kind of a life? Oh, I'm not asking do you have Christian influence. I'm not asking are you a member of a certain church. I'm asking you tonight, have you had this encounter with Christ? Has this change taken place in your life? Have you accepted the challenge of following Christ? Are you living a faithful life unto him? If not, you can start tonight. Right now.